I recently made a video on the beginning of the physical universe, and of course, because Dorbaton has an obsession with the universe being eternal, he responded. However, his premise is simply wrong. For the Big Bang to mark the beginning of physical existence, it would have to have been a singularity. This is of course wrong, because space breaks down well before a singularity would come into being. In fact, the notion that physical existence in space could exist past this point is, according to Professor Gates, ridiculous. Um, is it a question? I mean, you had at the beginning the zoom where it zooms in from um, the atom into the quarks and then finally into the strings. Um, how far can we zoom in? Where, when do you choose to stop? Because you can keep going on. Um, no, this is, a, this is a great question. And in fact, in string theory, there are some indications that there's an end to this zooming in process. There are two ways that we know about this. One of them comes from a very strange thing that's little discussed in string theory called the gross periwall uh, phase transition. This is uh, David Gross, who won the Nobel Prize for QCD a few years ago, was working with one of his uh, graduate students at Princeton about a decade ago. And what they found by studying the equations of string theory is that when you take this zooming in process to an extreme limit, it looks like space itself may in some sense disappear. We don't really know what's on the other side of the gross period wall transition. But one of the things that seems to definitely imply is that there's a limit to how much zooming in that you can actually perform before the notion of space itself becomes ridiculous. If you like this video, subscribe. And don't forget to check out my novel, Alaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. Now you can find us on Facebook at Idealism and Science versus Atheism. This mind is the matrix of all matter.